Getting blown up in client meetings sucks. And the number one way that that happens is with ambiguous goals. Two weeks ago, I put out a tweet and I said, allowing your client to give you ambiguous goals is a recipe for eventual disaster. Learning the art, and yes, it's an art, of pinning your client to some kind of a goal is a key skill. Well, here I am two weeks later, recording the video I told you I would, cause y'all kind of responded saying like, yeah, this is an important topic. So I'm gonna start off telling you about a time where one of my favorite clients blew me up. Michael Levitt taught me a big lesson. Rachel Gerson and I were sitting in a client office talking about some numbers that we had blown up. And the client said, do you know my business? And I went, oh God, here it comes. I could feel the lump in my throat that this was gonna be a bad meeting. And what Michael said to Rachel and I was, do you know that this thing that's up 500% that you all are so happy about, I really don't make a lot of money on that line of business, but this other business that you're only up 25% on, or whatever the number was at the time, is a huge increase for my business? We had no idea. And it was in that moment that I promised myself that I as an account manager would always know the depth of my client goals. But the problem is that the goals clients give you sometimes are really hard to pin down. For instance, we ask our clients for a lifetime value of a customer. That's a hard freaking number to get. I can't tell you the lifetime value of a customer at the company I own and have run for 17 years. It's a hard thing. So what happens when you have a client for whom you can't pin down a goal? I'm gonna give you a few pointers today on how I go about pinning a client down to goals to keep me from wavering in the wind and not knowing what the goals are. The first thing I realize is my sphere of influence over what metrics I can move. So for me as an SEO, I can move rankings easily because that's more within my sphere of influence. But then sometimes rankings might go up, but the traffic may not go up as much. Oof. I can't control the volume of people searching because that's out of my control. And then on conversions, that's even more outside of my control sometimes because I don't control the landing pages. I'm not doing the CRO. I'm not managing your marketing mix. So that can make it a little bit difficult. So it's important you talk to your client about the metrics you have the most influence over. So if they say, well, your rankings are up, but my conversions aren't up, you need to have a conversation with them around what you can most easily influence, okay? Once you have that conversation, instead of me saying to my client, what's your goal or what's a good outcome or a bad outcome, I wanna create a visceral reaction for them on like, what would make you get on an airplane today, fly to my office and break my kneecaps? What number would I need to hit or not hit for that to happen? Client's gonna be able to tell you exactly what's gonna make them wanna do that. And then let's talk about the opposite. What would make you wanna jump on a plane and throw a party for me and all my coworkers? What number do I need to hit to give you that reaction? When you give a client those very kind of like far ends, they can start to visualize like, no, what would make me get on a plane with a bat and want to come and break your freaking kneecaps is if I spent $100,000 on this project and you couldn't get me at least five conversions. Ah, okay, thank you. And then what's the opposite? If I got 50 conversions, I'd throw you guys a party. Awesome, now I know kind of what is their version of a great campaign and a horrible campaign. The other thing is so often at SEER, we want to get our metrics down to some kind of a value. And a lot of times clients will say, I don't know the value of a customer. Fine by me. What you do is you give your client broad ranges and then you hone them in. Let me give you an example. Uh, is a customer worth a dollar to you? Ten dollars, a hundred dollars, a thousand, ten thousand, or a hundred thousand, or a million. When you give a client that range, they start to be able to react. And they're like, well, I don't know what the number is, but it's somewhere between probably a hundred and a thousand. Okay, great, good enough start. Can we meet in the middle at 500? Ooh, no, that sounds a little bit high. But notice how I'm giving them something to react to versus leaving them with an open-ended question like, what's the lifetime value? Because then you watch clients kind of, let me go try to find that out and you're waiting and then you don't have your goal set. So then the client ends up spending weeks and they, or months and they go, we don't really have that number. And now you're three or four months into the project without having a metric to follow. So those are a couple of my tips on the ways that people get blown up in meetings for not knowing their client goals. I hope this helps you to further pin down your goals and objectives. Please leave some comments. I would love to hear back from you. Thanks. <laughs>